So you can you can start the class now. Okay. Um. All right. Uh. Good morning, everybody. Um. Want to officially welcome us to this class, um, environmental science, and um. This class will be divided into five sections. Um, for today's class, we'll be looking at um, the description of the climate system and its components. So I'm trusting God that um, the next time I have, I'll be able to finish up that. Then when we meet in the next class, we'll look at um, climate change, uh, greenhouse um, emissions, and the effects on the climate. Then we'll look at um, pollution, with special emphasis on air pollution and of course water pollution looking at the various uh, skillages that we have and then what are the legislations or environmental laws that takes care of all this so for today's class we'll be looking at um, the description of the climate system and um, its component so just follow me carefully if you have a pen and paper you can drop down as an um, class proceeds. So first of all, um, let's define climate. What do we understand by the word climate? Um, climate basically is the, the average condition of relevant atmospheric variables over a given period of time. What do I mean by that? It's simply the weather conditions prevailing in an area in, a, in general for um, a long period of time. Wikipedia defines climate as the long-term average weather. And for us to be able to understand climate, to say, okay, this particular um, environment or this particular area, this is the climate of this particular area. It takes a period of over 30 years, okay? So there are a lot of variables that we measure, okay, that makes up that term. Um, climate. Some of those variables include the temperature, precipitation, wind, cloud, and so forth and so on. So basically that's the definition of the climate, the average condition of um, atmospheric variables of a given area over a period of time. Now sometimes people confuse climate with weather. They are two different things. They are not the same. Um, just as we know, weather is what you get. From that statement, if you have seen my screen, weather is what you get. That is um, why climate is the, the measurement of what you're saying. So weather tells us the atmospheric condition for a day. Is it raining? Is it shining? Okay, are we having, are we experiencing fog? or snowfall. So this is measured in a day, okay? That is weather. So when you take the measurement for a day with a, a short period of time, that talks about weather. But for climate, it's actually for a very long period of time. And I talked about weather takes care of a particular variable. It can be temperature, it can be wind, it can be uh, cloud, you know, just like that. It can be rainfall. But climate is a cum accumulation of all this. Okay, you put them together to give you the climatic condition of a particular area. So we shouldn't confuse climate with weather. So moving forward, um, let's look at the climate system from that uh, um, graph, that uh, picture that I just displayed. You could see that um, everything that we have here actually explains the climate system. Now, when you look closely, um, from what we have, there are basically four components okay, that make up the climate system, which we can actually identify from the picture that I just uh, displayed. We have the, the atmosphere. We're going to be discussing these components one after the other. The atmosphere, you could see it there. We have the, the biosphere, which is actually the earth, the, earth, the earth where uh, life exists. We have the lithosphere, which is the, the solid earth, okay, where you have the electronics and the volcanoes and the mountains and the rest of them. Now, over time, 
these um, uh, mountains, they shred off to form the soil where the, uh, the, the biotic component actually exists. Then we have the, the hydrosphere, which is, of course, the water body. And there's one that uh, people don't really pay attention to much, and that's the cryosphere. The cryosphere talks about the, the solid water, okay, the solid water component of the environment, like the ice bridge, uh, the glaciers, and the rest of them. So these four components I just described, you can identify them from the uh, from the picture I have there. So this actually shows um, a kind of a cycle, a reaction that takes place in the in the environment as far as the climate is concerned. And the meteorologist pays attention to these kind of reactions. They take their readings using different um, um, instruments, which we are also going to be seeing over time in the course of this lecture, to be able to come up with the climatic condition of a particular environment. Just like I said, it takes a period of over 30 years to be able to ascertain that the climatic condition of this environment or this area is so 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 compared to the weather. The weather is just a short period of time. It can be a period of uh, 24 hours or more, uh, maybe two days or a week like that, like that. So or a particular season, and that's why we have the raining season, the dry season, the storms, and whatever. But climatic condition takes over um, a period of 30 years. So like I said, the components of the uh, climate system. We have the biosphere, we have the atmosphere, we have the lithosphere, uh, the hydrosphere, and of course the cryosphere is actually missing in that. So we we'll take them one after the other. Okay, this is the atmospheric structure. Um, actually, this is actually a graph, which uh, I wish I have a pen or something I'm able to explain uh, the trend that you're seeing in this particular graph. It talks about both the altitude and then the pressure. So over time, the reading is usually taking, um, you know, the altitude and the pressure, and they are both measured together to come up with um, what we actually have, the atmospheric um, condition of that particular area over a period of time. Okay. So the key layers of the atmosphere, basically, um, the nitrogen and the oxygen are the major um, elements that we have. In the atmosphere. The nitrogen takes about 78%, um, while the oxygen takes about 21%. Um, so we have other minute elements, um, or the trace elements, like um, the argon that takes 1%, water vapor 0.4%, then of course the helium, methane, pyptine, hydrogen, xenon, and then the ozone. So this is actually one mix of the atmosphere. And we know that uh, these various elements that you find in the atmosphere, they all play, play different roles as far as the ecosystem is concerned. Oxygen, of course, we know is needed by, um, by man, okay, so, um, a source of life, okay. So we take in oxygen and then we release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which is actually needed by the plants for photosynthesis. So this carbon dioxide are taken up uh, through the, the stomata of the leaf, okay? And then the presence of the chlorophyll, you know, in the leaf helps them for photosynthesis. And then this plant, in other words, release back the, uh, the oxygen because oxygen is one of the byproducts of this photosynthesis. So that's how the oxygen is being recirculated into the atmosphere. And of course, nitrogen, it takes nitrogen 70% like we can see from the, from the graph. Um, is the major element we have in the atmosphere. Nitrogen plays a very big role, okay, in maintaining, uh, you know, the, the climatic condition in a particular place in the land. Plants also, uh, um, some plants, especially leguminous plants, they also um, depend on this atmospheric nitrogen to be able to to attract the uh, the, nit the nitrogen fixing bacteria in the root nodules of these uh, leguminous plants. Fix this nitrogen. In the roots of this plant, so for them to survive and the rest of them. So that is what we have um, as far as the atmosphere is concerned. Okay, this picture is actually not really um, very clear, but I'll just explain what we have there. We're going down to the hydrosphere, so I'm done with the atmosphere. So this is the hydrosphere, 
it describes the water cycle okay uh, this particular uh, picture describes the water cycle first of all water from ocean and land surfaces evaporates turning into water vapor in the atmosphere we all know that so when the weather um, is, is hot for example there's sunlight um, precipitation and evaporation takes place this is how the water returns to the atmosphere okay precipitation through the plant leaves and then evaporation through the water bodies okay so this water gets back and uh, evaporates into the atmosphere through evaporation and precipitation so water leaves uh, water vapor leaves uh, in the water bodies and then go back as you can see from the diagram it's clear enough then water like i said water also transpires off plant leaves joining with the water vapor from the ocean and land surfaces and this is actually known as a evapotranspiration evapotranspiration just like i've explained evaporation from the water bodies and then transpiration from the plants so by the time both of them meet in the atmosphere in the process called evapotranspiration okay then um, snow and ice can also be transformed directly from a solid to water vapor for those countries that experience um, ice snow the rest of them you know, over time when they drop they drop in form of a solid water and then over time they are being transformed to liquid and then from liquid back to vapor and it uh, returns to the atmosphere in a process known as a sublimation sublimation so water also returns to the atmosphere via ice in a process called sublimation now as the water vapor rises into the cooler air it condenses into cloud you need to understand that so once this water vapor gets into the atmosphere it all condenses into a cloud. If you look into the atmosphere, you could find it. So this water, uh, water vapor, these water uh, molecules are being evaporated back into the atmosphere as stored in form of a vapor. Okay, after condensation that's taking place in the atmosphere, so it remains in the in the atmosphere as clouds. Then, after a particular period of time, um, this water now falls in form of precipitation after a, after a particular time the cloud that held the water released its the water molecules and then it falls in form of precipitation which is rain so it gets back to you know to, to the head cross and it can come in form of rain can come in form of snow can also come in form of hail these are the three ways that this uh, water gets to the head crust okay so that is just a simple explanation of um, what you're seeing there, which is actually referred to as a, the water cycle. Okay. Um, for us to understand, because I've used some, some terms here now, so for us to really understand, I want to define some of those terms I just used. Talked about evaporation. Evaporation has to do with the transformation of water from liquid to gas. Transformation of water from liquid to, to gas. So you can put that down as it moves from the land or bodies of water into the atmosphere. So once they're moving in like that, they're being converted from, from liquid to gas. So that's evaporation. Transpiration, like I said, is the release of water vapor from plants and the plant leaves into the air. That's transpiration. Then condensation is the transformation of water vapor into liquid. Remember when it went into the atmosphere, when the water rose into the atmosphere, it's a form of vapor. So it has to condense back to liquid okay so the transformation of this water vapor into liquid into liquid water droplets in the air which creates clouds or fog and fog is actually referred to as a condensation and this happens once water rises into the atmosphere the air temperature falls below the dew point so once the temperature falls below the dew point the, the, the water vapor will definitely condense into the liquid. Okay, then precipitation, like you heard me say, precipitation has to do with um, condensed water vapor that falls to the earth surface. Okay, in form of rain, snow, hail, fog, drip, and sleet. 
Okay, so that's precipitation. And that water, that water before had already been condensed into liquid, falling back to the earth crust is actually referred to as a precipitation. Now there's also um, fresh water storage in ice and snow. Okay, you know, for the course of this particular um, this course, the course outline didn't tell us about that. So I just want us to let, I just want us to understand that this, this, and then there's also groundwater storage. So it's not only the, in the cloud, the atmosphere that this water has been stored. Okay, they are also stored in ice and snow, and others are also stored in groundwater. Okay, that means when rain falls, the water percolates into the earth crust. Okay, forming the groundwater that we have. Okay, so those are some of the things that um, I would really want to understand as far as the hydrosphere is concerned. Okay, so in the course of this too, we're going to be looking at um, the lithosphere and of course the cryosphere. Uh, just to, to just to reiterate what I've just said to be sure that um, everybody is following um, what I've been explaining. I started by defining what climate is. And then I tried to differentiate between climate and then um, weather. Okay, I think I need to display that so that um, for those who are writing, they can actually get it. So the difference between weather and climate is like I said, weather describes the day-to-day -day conditions of the atmosphere. So you can write that down. Then weather can change quickly. Okay, in one day, it can be dry, just as you're saying. In another day, it can be sunny. The next day is rain okay so you can wake up in the morning and wake up with uh, rain and after two hours the rain is gone and then the sun is out again like that so the day-to-day -day condition of the atmosphere that is weather but climate describes the average weather conditions over a long period of time and there are different conditions take note conditions is in plural okay so that's the difference between weather and climate. I hope we all got that. All right, so let's proceed. Measuring the weather. Okay, weather affects us in many ways. We all know that. You wake up in the morning, you have so many activities to do only for the rain to start. If you're not mobile, you know what that means. Okay, it affects what we do, what we wear, how we travel, you know, even our moods. Okay, so fantastic. They said meteorologists measure weather condition in different places. I use this information to report and make forecasts about future weather conditions. You follow channel CNN and the rest of them, they give you weather reports every day. Okay, so every day, every minute of the day, they are updating you the uh, weather conditions of uh, where you're staying. Now, when you know the weather conditions of your area, it will help you form your activity, what you're going to wear. Am I going out with umbrella? Am I going, am I going out with um, raincoats, rain boots, you know? This the kind of weather control you may see, we just change your language. So, so it affects our daily activities. Okay. So this is useful because people can be warned about hazardous weather conditions such as storms and floods. So from the information we get from the meteorologists, they it, they help us, they guide us on how to prepare for the kind of weather conditions that we need to know. So what do we measure? We've said the climate is the average atmospheric condition for a particular place over a long period of time. These are the variables that is being measured over a long period of time to ascertain the climate of that particular place. So we have the temperature, we have the precipitation, which is the rainfall, snow and the rest of them. Uh, we have the wind speed and wind direction, we have the cloud cover and visibility, we have air pressure, humidity, which is the amount of water vapor in the air. And then, of course, the sunshine visibility. These are the things that meteorologists measure over a long period of time. And they keep record of these measurements. At the end of the day, uh, their findings or their, um, their data is being collected and being analyzed. Now come up and say, okay, the climatic condition of this uh, place is so so. So, the same, just the same thing is also done for the weather. But weather, like I said, is over a short period of time. Why the um, climate is over a long period of time. So we have the temperature, the precipitation, wind speed, wind direction, cloud cover and visibility, air pressure, humidity, sunshine, visibility. I hope you're taking note of everything and then um, writing as much as possible. 
All right, so let's look at them one after the other, how they are being measured. Um, for the temperature, it's measured in Celsius using a, a thermometer, like we all know. And the thermometer must be shaded from direct sunlight and should have air circulating around it. So you can have readings 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, minus 10, minus 20, like that, like that, depending on the atmospheric temperature that particular period of time. So temperature is measured in Celsius. Celsius using a thermometer. Okay. Precipitation, just as I've already explained, is uh, measured using a rain gauge. Okay. We measure the precipitation or rainfall using the rain gauge. It is measured in millimeters, and then the rain gauge contains an outer um, container funnel and inner cylinder cylinder ground level bottle is actually calibrated okay, to take the measurement of the precipitation for that particular period of time. So rainfall or precipitation is measured using the rain gauge. Wind direction. The wind direction is reported by the direction it is blowing from. That's number one. According to the compass, so you see, um, you know, the instrument that they use in measuring it, it looks like the form of a you know, compass and the rest of them. So as the compass is turning, okay, against the where the wind is, is blowing from, the measurement is also taken. And this is done using the wind, the wind vane. Okay, so to measure the wind, wind speed or wind direction, uh, to measure the wind speed, we use the wind, uh, the wind vane. Okay, and then for uh, the wind speed, you can also use the wind, uh, the wind vane to also measure the wind speed. Now, the strength of the wind is um, can also be used, uh, and the thermometer can also be used to measure the wind speed, the wind speed. Okay, there's all called the, the Beaufort scale. Okay, it's calibrated. The anemometer, anemometer is calibrated. Okay, and then um, okay, the second part of the slide actually tells us how the anemometer looks like. Okay, so just know that wind speed can be measured using the anemometer. anemometer. Some persons also use uh, the wind gauge to measure that, but I think wind gauge um, works more for the wind direction. So know if it's not that's how we come up with this northeast trade wind then the the is it the northwest that is southwest trade wind so then so we said northeast trade wind blows from the desert from the dry place of desert bringing in hamatan so that's why towards um, from uh, september so like the because of climate change which are going to discuss in the next class this thing in fact has scattered you cannot even ascertain when because normally when I was going up, we know very that this is in September. Towards the end of September, rain is already going by October, November, December, already having a dry week. So that's really the northeast trade wind that brings in. So the wind blows from you know from the days are bringing dry, dry wind into the into the uh, to the environment. So that's that. And then the one that blows from the south, which is the southwest trade wind brings in precipitation of cool air okay, from the oceans and from the river, which um, brings about the rainfall and the rest of them. So, so that's that for that. For air pressure, it is measured using the barometer. The air pressure is uh, measured using the barometer, and the unit um, is actually millibars. So the unit of measurement is millibars. So the greater the reading, the higher the pressure is that we have. And of course, we have the cloud, cloud types, cloud that categorized according to the height and shape, okay, different categories. So we we'll look at the cloud when we get to um, the biosphere and the rest of them. So let's run because of my time. So well, uh, um, I've explained the atmosphere, I've explained the hydrosphere. So the next is the biosphere. The biosphere is actually like I explained to you where life exists, where the plants and animals live. That's the biosphere, okay? So let me go because of my time. So that's what I just want us to know about the biosphere, okay? Where life exists, that's where both of you, you and I are living. That's the biosphere, okay? Um, the biosphere has three layers. We have the crust, we have the mantle, we have, we have the core. 
So where we are living is the outer part. It's like an apple shape. So when you peel off, you know, the surface of an apple, that is the crust. So it's actually that outer surface that is where we are actually living. That's why it's called the earth crust. Then we have the mantle, which is mobile. It's always flowing because it's made up of a liquid um, elements. That's where you have um, the uh, volcanic eruption, those molten magmas and the rest of them. And of course, the core is very, very hot. These things are being, it comes out from the core, makes its way to the mantle. Then when the pressure builds in the mantle, it erupts into the crust. So the biosphere, which is the earth, has three layers, the crust, the mantle, and the core. I'm trying to explain to you the climate in general so they understand what makes up the climate. Then the lithosphere, lithosphere includes uh, the uppermost part of um, the crust, which is actually rigid in nature. That is the solid part of the earth, the earth crust. Just like I explained earlier, like the, tecton the tectonic plains, the mountains, the volcanoes, and the rest of them, that solid part. So over time, these things get shredded. If we do but to do a rock cycle, you explain how you see how sedimentary metamorphic and all those rocks are being formed. So partly how sedimentary uh, this thing are formed is through the shedding of these uh, tectonic plates, these mountains. So they are shedded in form of sediments and they are being carried by the wind. And then over time it covers a particular area, forming the crust, which is the soil. So little sphere is actually that part. So I'm running. Now, the, this is um, the cutway um, from center to surface. I'm just trying to explain the ethosphere, what happens, how it's being shredded over time and the rest of them. Okay, I don't have much time, but I've explained that. And then we have the cryosphere. Cryosphere is like the lithosphere. The difference between the lithosphere and the cryosphere is that the cryosphere describes the solid water, which I, which I explained before, the iceberg, the, the river ice. No? the glaciers and the rest of them. You know, if you look at it, um, scientists have told us that the Earth has about 70% of water. The whole Earth is so to me, the dry land is just 30%. Even in that, that 30%, 99% of that 30% is um, salt water. So you see that the only dry, um, fresh water that we have is less than 1%. So how did we have this enormous, so some, some soil, some water bodies have to be converted to ice? icebergs and glaciers to be able to create. I think that's the God is the first scientist. I'm sure that's what he did to be able to make dry land, you know, from the pool of water. Okay, so the cryosphere actually describes this particular part of uh, the river, the solid part of the liquid. That is the cryosphere. So you can see that from um, from this thing that we have. Okay, so I think I will be ending this class. Okay, I still have like um, you know. I think I have about three, four minutes to go. So, okay, so can continue. Um, so this is the cryosphere. So conclusively, what I've been able to share with us today um, will describe the climate and the climatic system, one mix of the, the climate and everything. So in conclusion, climate is a state of the components of the climate system, which we just looked at all the components of the, the climate system. And then we said the climate of the location is affected by its latitude, the terrain, the altitude. Okay, that graph I showed you, I wish I had time, but I've been able to explain to you how the climate is affected by distance, just as we saw it from the graph, measurement of the altitude against the, you know, the latitude, okay? So that's that. And then, so there is need, therefore, now to care for the climate, because changes in the climate, like we said, affect a whole lot of things. As we said, it changes your mood, it tells you what to eat. Now, apart from that, apart from those psychological effects that this climate has, how about food production? How about water availability? The wildlife, the human health, you know, the weather conditions such as storm, we had a hurricane. We've seen all those things, earthquake, we've seen all those things in some countries, volcano, volcanic eruptions and the rest of them. So there's therefore need to care for this climate. So in a, in a, um, in the next classes we're going to be having, we're going to be we're going to carefully discuss all these things. And then at the end of the day, we're going to suggest measures on how we can actually care for this, for this particular climate. So I think that brings us to the end of um, this class so hopefully by next week we'll be looking at um, 
climate change. There are a lot of things we're going to be discussing as far as the climate change is concerned. All right, so I'm going to give a quick assignment um, for each of us. We're going to submit it um, to my mail. I will drop my mail later. So we take an assignment. Um, describe the weather condition in your area. So if you live in the north, quickly describe the weather condition you have in your area, those in the south, those in the east, east. not um, more than 250 words. Okay, submit that to my mail. All right, thank you so much for participating in today's class. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bad. That was a right. smooth class. Thank you. All right, sir. Thank you, sir.